So, how is everyone doing on this beautiful Saturday evening, morning? <laughs> Guess we're all being shy. I can share a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. It, it's a funny day. Like I'm, I'm actually in, in my love bubble, so I'm super happy and I feel super loved and loving, and all is kind of nice. But all the people I encounter today, they go through some big stress, like things going wrong for them or miscommunication or little drama in, in their love relationship or like emotional and upset or like disconnected with some friends but i i just feel like okay whatever is happening what matters to me the most right now is we really really aligned and connected so i'm, I'm not so much affected but i observed it in like five or six people today and it was like really like a common thread I don't know if that's happening for others as well, but I've been observing that all around me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're yeah. on a different frequency. When we are in love, we are above uh, planetary influences, above, uh, you know, anything. <laughs> it's just another world altogether. <laughs> so nothing can touch you in that space. Normal but, people... Yeah. <laughs> they are planetary influences. They experience <laughs> the Mercury retrograde combining with Venus uh, kind of last moment now turning direct. Mm -hmm. so, Turn direct already, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's, uh, it's unresolved emotional issues plus uh, mental confusion uh, plus uh, delays in transports and, and information. Well... Yeah, I mean, Mercury retrograde, it's about misunderstandings. So we know what that is. So in a way, if you give a romantic uh, uh, rendezvous to someone, you have chances of, on missing it because mm -hmm. of some kind of transport glitch and feeling super bad about it because of emotional kind of instability <laughs> created by Venus. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for... Uh, but uh, before we start, let's just uh, take our cups up and cheers, cheers, guys, for yet another beautiful day together. Another precious moment, set mm -hmm. of precious moments of our lives intertwined together and uh, sharing and co-creating something new and magical for the world. So cheers. So how about somebody else? Uh, uh, we will have a proper question for you, but uh, I just also wanted to see what's going on on energetic level for you guys. Since there are not too many of us, we can hear a few more uh, inputs of what's going on. Yes, Sylvia. I'm feeling a lot of love and lots of different type of love um, with clients, with friends, um, yeah, all, all sorts of different essence of love. And um, it's almost like learning that how many shades and um, colors love has. And at the end of the day, love is love. So <laughs> it's really, really beautiful. I, I certainly don't feel miscommunication. I feel that I am actually becoming more clear with my own communication and more assertive, um, mm -hmm. more in my integrity with my communication. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. And becoming uh, it's almost like giving birth to myself again <laughs> so it's, it's really really nice and um, connecting with, uh, with people on a heart and soul level more and more and uh, yeah Oni and I have some really beautiful and deep sharings and I think all of these sharings are, are part of um, 
um, my transformation as well. So I, I just would like to acknowledge that and how uh, beautifully this friendship is growing on the warning and kind of beautifying me, beautifying her hopefully. But yeah, so love, 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 love is all around and I can totally relate to what Anna said, even though I don't have a romantic partner at the moment, but I feel Thank you, and you are really radiating. We can totally feel it here. They are beaming. <laughs> and that beautiful scarf, like everything, it's just you are beaming. Yes. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Would uh, someone else like to share what's active in your field? How are these energies affecting you? Before I go a little bit more in astrology and actually tell you what we see is going on. Yes, Eleonora. Hey. Yeah, I uh, I thought about it, about your question, what, what is uh, happening right now. And it's like kind of some kind of feeling, uh, some energies and um, and trying to find the right balance, the alignment within my body, with outside world, everyday life, and it's kind of, you know, juggling and also trying to materialize something. And it like, and feeling that is at some point when I look back, it works. <laughs> so it's, so it's kind of yeah this, and with this. Feminine masculine alignment, yeah, that's like inside, and and I feel that it's really important, so I want to embrace it. Mm. Yeah, well, then you're in the right place for this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you for bringing it up. It is super important, yes, and not always clear what it all means. Yeah. So, we will definitely now go and clarify it once and for all, and we can always then go to this recording to remind ourselves <clears throat> thank you Lenora so Eve and then Anne so Eve good morning everyone I'm actually walking around the French countryside which is why I don't have my uh, video on um I oh, everything is just I'm like in a state of like freaking magic I, I just I can't believe like how many things are all occurring all at once on a on the physical plane. So much is that this area that we landed in, the synchronicities. It, it's just like I feel like I need to write a book. <laughs> so much happening, and everything is just so beautiful. And you know, I'm building something here with the cooking and aligning with. I've met this incredible woman and we're going to be partnering up to innovate the, the school, the way we cook for the children, make it a community hub, like turn it into like a, like, like just so many ideas are just pouring through me and I'm in, I'm initiating my very own um, uh, creative um, meditation exercise tomorrow. I was invited to create something and because I was given that invitation, like something just started pouring through me and I have no idea how it's gonna land, but it feels really powerful. And it's all about that alignment, you know, between the masculine and the feminine. And and I know that you guys working with you when we did meet the parents, just something just blew off, you know, a veil was pierced and my relationships have never been better with my mother, with my father, with my children, with with my dog, with like every, just everything is just so beautiful. Like I'm just, I just can't believe that life could be so great. It's just like, you know, when it's like the beginning and end, it's just this constant unfolding of everything that's supposed to be, what, what it's supposed to be like here on earth, you know? And I'm just <laughs> eternally grateful for this human experience. And there's shit in between, you know, but I suddenly feel more empowered. It's like, you know, my daughter started vomiting last night. And, you know, I just contemplated the fact that we're transiting the 19th duty. That's her evolution. She's receiving huge surges of energy and she's just, you know, and being able to guide her 
and you know connecting her with crystals and she's using you know smoky quartz and she's 10 and she's like on this whole i just feel like i'm just training little wizards and witches and i love it i just <laughs> love this journey so um and share you know just kind of sharing everything that you've taught me and other people and just teaching my kids and everyone around me so it's so cool thank you oh, <laughs> Wow. <clears throat> well, thank you for this infusion of uh, joy. Of light and, and joy, <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, and, and uh, oh, we sh well, we did record. We, we, we should crop this out and listen to every time that mm -hmm. we feel that life is, life sucks. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, I think we will yeah we will re listen to this thank you so much and so happy that this is all uh, unfolding like that for you and uh yeah amazing and like you say training little witches and wizards like really like uh, kids being really wise ones that don't have baggage that we have so cool so cool yeah so um i, I thought i saw anna's hand up and then frank or on. Frank and on. <laughs> I um, just wanted to share. I I woke up this morning with so many different energies actually for a long time. It was just silent. It was silent after weeks and weeks of kind of obsessive thought patterns and things, but. It just felt so different, a quietness when I was just sitting with you for hours in the morning and watching the animals and playing and taking pictures and not really thinking anything, just enjoying the quietness. Mm. Something shifted today. <laughs> wow, well remember how it feels when venus turns from going uh. Re uh, retrograde <laughs> to direct <clears throat> me too i could finally sleep a normal full night uh and woke up like oh it's 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 incredible how planets have influence on on us whether we notice or not but if we're sensitive to a particular uh influence then it's it's absolutely visible. Mm -hmm. We cannot forget that the planets are actually extension of our body and extension of our energy bodies. So whether we masked it or not, we feel it. Yeah. Except if we are on, on that other world like Hannah, <laughs> then nothing else matters. Then there's something a little <laughs> bit louder than that, but they are still there in the background. So Frank, you wanted to add something. Yeah, please unmute. Yes, hello. Um, well, it's only me today. Uh, mm -hmm. Juana has another call also at 11, so that's why uh, I'm, I'm joining. Um, so, yeah, no, the, the topic was really interesting. I saw it, um, uh, I don't know, like yesterday evening, and um, I, I joined the men's facilitator program uh, like some months ago, and we actually worked like two months on uh, masculine and feminine, like also dark uh, and, and light masculine and feminine and the polarities between um and so it's really i'm really curious to to know and to see what what you also have as insights in, in, in this topic i mean it's, it's it's huge you know like it's uh, uh most probably will not be able to cover it in those two hours but um yeah really really curious to see um mm -hmm. what you have to say mm. thank you <clears throat> yeah yes great. exactly frank you said it it's huge it's huge and it's so fundamental that even though it seems like oh we've talked about it but the importance of uh, of this profound understanding really uh, called us to to go deeper into the technicality of what it means for us and also how our energies and lives form accordingly because if we get this one thing right then everything else in our lives will just you know follow harmoniously so yes <laughs> so literally you know. polarities and elements it's a basis even of our immune system like there everything is there like everything so whether the energy can flow through us or not it's the matter of <laughs> health and uh you know 
the low state of health or exuberant health and all that. So super, super important. And there is a confusion about what is the inner polarities and outer polarities. So we want to kind of really make it clear and get out of our way the confusing words because we call it inner masculine and inner feminine. So we imagine a little man, a little woman. We have to kind of get those, the confusing words out of the way. Yeah. Would somebody else like to share about uh, how you're feeling this energetic shift right now? <clears throat> Otherwise, we just dive right in. Yeah, we can dive right in. And uh, I just wanted to point out what is happening in these outside energies and why this is coming up now to be discussed. And uh, it is about Venus that is getting direct after months of going uh, retrograde, which means that everything that had to do with the inner creativity, inner openness, inner beauty, and the way how we s show up to the world as uh, like a fertile field of creation that something concrete can create, whatever in us was to be examined why maybe we are not able to manifest something in physical life. This was that period of Venus retrograde made us examine everything inside that was in the way of that. So when the planet turns forward, it means, well, now apply your lessons. Whatever you've learned, whatever you cleared, whatever had happened in this previous period, now we do something concrete about it, especially when it's a Venus uh, in question. At the same time, there is this Mercury going retrograde in the same area of life, which is the Capricorn. So it is still some thinking and beliefs that could be standing in a way and some misunderstandings that can come up, but not from the heart place where Venus was still now, more from the mind space. So still there is some yeah, mind confusion questions. confusion, because mm -hmm. what, uh, when Mercury goes retrograde, I have noticed that all certainties that we had suddenly are re-questioned. So is it true, that information that I believed? Is it uh, accurate? Can I think differently? It's also a good time to rewire our beliefs, <clears throat> because it's very, you know, when the planet turns retrograde, we are re-examining what and how we think. So for the polarity work, this is the absolute best time ever because we're not into the thick of emotions anymore. Well, we'll not be for, for now, uh, but we are into practical, concrete action of uh, changing the ways we think. And what happens is that the Mars is just about to align itself with this Venus. So what perfect alignment of masculine and feminine polarity just in front of us. Now that they are both going direct, they will soon uh, align in the archetype of Capricorn. So it means we will be creating almost like the new uh, way how society works. And we will be creating on the concrete level something together with the inner aligned polarities. So this is in inner front of us. Of, uh, heart and mind. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately that Mars and Venus is heart and mind working mm -hmm. together and not against each other. Exactly. So w one thing why this is usually difficult to talk about uh, the topic of inner polarities, topic of inner masculine and inner feminine is that we have this confusion of the words. Confusion of the words that there is Adam and Eve or there is uh, uh, masculine and feminine. So we think if we act, if we are a woman, that if we lack inner masculine means we have to be more like a man. Or if I'm as a man lacking feminine, I need to be more like a woman. So this masculine feminine is actually throwing us off because we are connected to the physical man and the physical woman. But this is not it. It does not talk about uh, the qualities of an actual man. It is just describing energies. Same with Adam and Eve. Adam is not a certain man and Eve certain woman. It is a flow of cosmic 
creative forces that have certain qualities. And we have to dis dissociate that from the actual, this is a man, and then uh, Eve is an archetype of a woman, and uh, this direct connection is not supposed to be there. Um, in this Christian dogma that is explained through Adam and Eve, Adam was uh, a pro creation of the divine that is both male and female, and Adam had both male and female features, and then part of it was separated so that there is polarity of like a battery. Now, from one that is not creating anything, we have a battery with plus and minus, and then the current starts. And then when we have battery with plus and minus, the pedals start moving and the engine starts running. So the idea is that it's just different polarities of the force. And mm -hmm. we will go deeper into what they imply. Yeah, so same in Hindu tradition, there was Shiva. Shiva all inclusive uh, with both polarities within. And then when Shakti came along, so Shiva is sitting in his, his abode in complete stillness and, and oneness. But then only when Shakti comes along and starts interacting, then the Shiva wakes up to the action. So all these like big archetypes mm -hmm. we encounter in, um, in religions, uh, ancient cultures, they are pointing only to one thing. They're trying to put an image <clears throat> uh, the way how our body works, how our inner energetic systems are created. And basically the, uh, the whole Hindu system, for example, the Shiva and Shakti and uh, the whole kind of pantheon of, uh, of uh, divinities. God, the divinities, they represent the allegory of um, our inner polarities, plus and minus and the five elements. So literally everything that we are is just that, two polarities and five elements and the infinite amount of combinations. So for uh, yeah. an every level of our being, this is the core principle that we need to remember, plus and minus, like a battery. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you know, energy can only be produced if there are these opposites, a friction, otherwise it's standing still. Either it's a non-expressed potential, or it's yeah, or, there, or there's or, no no energy, or it's absolute <laughs> peace. So when they say the Adam was created first, it is like the spark or 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 the spirit. The spirit cre created contains in itself the potential of creation, but it needs a vessel in which something is going to be created. So then Eve was taken out of the the spirit which just represents the matter. So this force is now have is going to have something to express itself in, and this is the matter. So the matter will be shaped. So the force and the matter will start interacting and creating different sculptures, different uh, shapes, different uh, beings, creatures, species, everything that they want. But it is actually just faces on universal forces so if you look at the, any of the Hindu sculptures like Brahma, the actual point of the force is right one pot, uh, spot inside. But all of these different arms and heads are being made so that we remind ourselves of the quality of the force. So that it's kind of personified, so that we kind of understand and remember what this force actually does. But the force itself is a tiny little dot in the center of the sculpture. The same goes with Saraswati, everybody else. So those archetypes are made in a human form to remind ourselves of something that's familiar from everyday, everyday life. Or even for, for learning, uh, it's very difficult to grasp these con concepts abstractly from within. So this outer projection is where we can, uh, you know, have a look and understand what it is. So the basic principle is that for anything to happen, there needs to be a friction. Like any engine, anything have to have this uh, plus and minus interaction and that creates a movement, that creates uh, energy flow. And the five elements translated into 
uh, senses, into all kinds of experience. So when we think of, for example, illness, what is illness? It's unbalanced elements and polarities. And pretty much from uh, Chinese acupuncture, uh, those of you who are a little bit into it, you understand that it's about balancing the currents and un unblocking the pathways that are not flowing. So very quickly we can uh, we can touch that fundamental energetic structure that we what, that we all have and the, the whole universe has, which is based on the polarities of uh, vertical polarity with a plus on the top and minus uh, at the bottom of our of our body, and uh, more precisely. Uh, the, the minus is the Shakti sitting in our first chakra at the base of the spine and the plus is Shiva which is sitting in uh, in our third eye in our pineal gland and uh, they're both connected with the spinal column where two currents of energy, the Ida and Pingala, are rising up intertwined. So the famous Kundalini and enlightenment and everything is when that channel of the spine is successfully kind of unlocked and the energy of minus of the Shakti is able to rise up and meet the, the plus energy in the, in, the, in the brain. And that creates, well, this uh, gateway to heaven, enlightenment, uh, however you want to call it, but it actually gives access to to the God consciousness. Yeah. So <clears throat> the Shiva part or the third eye part is our connection to the divine source. The Shakti part or the root chakra is connected to earth, ground. So again, the same archetypes. One is connected to the earth and another one is connected to the center of all creation. So when we put them together, then literally the center of all creation reconnects to the earth and we are in the state of uh, heaven on earth, so to speak. So mm -hmm. we are actually touching the place where we are detached. In a normal functioning, we are very much oriented to the material life. We are very much kind of <laughs> brainwashed into believing only in the material because we have not yet touched this place experientially where we perceive the forces that are creative forces. When we are there, really nothing matters. And like Evia likes to say, nothing matters and everything matters. But at least we have this point that uh, you feel part of the creation and creation is actually playing through us. Mm -hmm. when Which means this is we're connected. not polarized into mm -hmm. into left or right, mm -hmm. uh, good or bad. We accept everything as it is, but we also understand our individuality within the divinity. Yeah. So that ab absolute kind of perfect balance of polarities is uh, is what enlightened beings actually uh, mm -hmm. represent and live. But it's not easy to mm -hmm. to to get there because of. Um, because blockages. of uh, all the blockages and mm -hmm. interferences, because uh, on on the top of this ver vertical plus and minus, and even that is represented by Father Sky and Mother Earth, so we find it all over the place. But if we bring all external explanations to this one understanding that uh, there's vertical uh, polarity alignment, and then horizontal, which is yeah. our individual uh, plus and minus, so the the masculine plus being on the like the right side of our body most of the time, and the negative feminine in the left side of our body. So this is also the polarity that counts, and this polarity is the mm -hmm. one that is subject to being infused from our ancestors, as we as we learned in the course of Meet the Parents. Uh, this is where the ancestors and uh, like uh, karma and stuff. Yeah, like interference is coming in these uh, uh, horizontal polarities. So and, in... and then there is this third set mm. of uh, polarities, which is front and back. Yeah, 
So you can imagine us as a cross, as a literally a cross, but with a third dimension, which is front and back, which is also polarity, uh, mm -hmm. positive in front and uh, positive in, um, in the back and negative in the front. So if we want to put it in a simpler terms, this horizontal alignment where we put the palms together in front of our heart, this is our inner masculine and feminine polarity. When we talk about up and down, this is going to the wider expression of uh, the divine alignment with earth and with the center of the universe. So when we put that cross and then front and back, we can think about it as past and future or, you know, however we want to think about it. Uh, center, dead center is right now, right here in full ma masculine and positive and negative alignment of our microcosm and vertical alignment with macrocosm. And that when we are able to align both of those, then we are in so-called zero field. Everything is possible. So that's what we are looking for to be able to reach that state and out of that state, then create creative imbalance from which we create things because if we are in perfect alignment and stay there then we don't need to really do anything we are in nirvanic state and we can stay there and meditate and be blissful and happy for all our lives but uh, the point of being there is touching that state and then coming back and we did create so this is what we want to do we want to be able to go in that state and then uh, be conscious of getting in and out of it at will and not being kind of pushed in and out left and right by uh, randomness of the forces that are acting on us. So that is creating that inner alignment that is our column of unmovable column of uh, a spiritual column that we always go back to. So it's like a must of a boat, boat must, yeah? So yeah, that vertical alignment is very difficult to achieve, and uh, yogis spend lifetimes trying. Yeah, um, to whole hatha yoga is about this. Yeah, the whole, whole hatha every yoga. Every single exercise yeah. of hatha yoga and its derives uh, has a purpose of one thing: mm -hmm. uh, attaining shunyata, the emptiness, the emptiness that is the fullness. So this state of perfect, uh, mm -hmm. absolute perfect uh, communion with uh, the divine and the universe. So, so this is theory. Maybe, Let's go to yeah, practice. <laughs> we will maybe get there one day, but uh, only if we understand what is it, what what is standing on the way. Hmm. We have a you know possibility to live life in random ways and follow the drives and try to adjust it based on what we see outside, or we can take the shortcut and look inside because. Outside reality, as we have said multiple times, is just this expression of the inner reality, uh, of the inner state, current state of the balance of the polarities and the elements. Mm -hmm. So how do we know where are we at with our polarities, like right now as we speak? There are two ways to know. You can listen to your inner dialogue, and we will give the ways to understand where you're at according to what kind of thoughts you're having uh, uh, inside. Or you can look at the uh, relationships that you have around or how your life is going. And that is like copying that inner state, but in maybe bigger picture. So it's easier to see. Hmm. Let's give so, some examples. Yeah, so, of... so the inner inner masculine and, and feminine, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it does have uh, similarities to how men and women express in their lives. But, but let's always think it's in me. So when I say my inner polarities, this is plus and minus in me. Let's not think about uh, men and women, out, women outside of us. So when you say plus polarity, this which we out of convenience called male polarity. It is about action. It is about having energy and projecting it out and doing something about it. It's, it is about movement. It is about impulse, impulse to move, impulse to create. 
What do I create? I don't know yet, but it's impulse to create and willingness to create, willpower and energy to create. So it is... And decisive action. Uh, definitely. Taking an action and taking the concrete action in the in the physical realm. So it is just this impulse. Mm -hmm. Well, the and, symbol of the Mars, very, mm -hmm. very kind of uh, mm -hmm. revealing. It's a circle with the arrow. You with the arrow. I, I'm going somewhere. So, I'm going in some direction. So that's the symbol of the Mars. Mm -hmm. The, the, the ma inner masculine principle has the uh, direction. I'm propelled to, to act, exactly. So I'm being, I'm being compelled to act. There is this excessive energy that I'm compelled to put in some direction. Without inner feminine, it can go anywhere. And it can be completely random. And it can be, you know, go too much, head through uh, the wall. Wrong timing, mm -hmm. too much effort. Mm -hmm. Uh, too much stress so so we know that inner feminine in myself feminine in myself is the willingness to create the space to create feel to create frequency the right alignment with earth so if we want to look at the symbol symbol is the symbol of venus which is the circle with cross underneath which represents earth so this is, it means being grounded, being grounded in cross, white cross, four elements in four elements, being aligned with seasons, being in, in synchronicity with seasons. So using the natural nature around us and seasons of the planet as waves to surf on. So it is readiness to create. It is fertile ground that can receive the seed and then nurture it into giving birth to the actual fruit so when we talk about it in everyday terms it is creating the place of inspiration to act and and not only it's receptivity intuition mm -hmm. so it's being able to receive the subtle messages being able to perceive the moods and the needs of uh, people around so it's the openness to receive so that feminine principle as we know receives mm -hmm. yeah when we act towards the outer uh, world, to, to, towards the universe, for example, we also act out of our polarities. We are either in receptive state of accepting the flow of life, uh, tuning into it. When we say we tune into the uh, uh, what needs to be done, we're being all in our feminine polarity and using that as an antenna. When mm -hmm. we are acting upon things, we're being in our masculine polarity, well, we can also micromanage the universe mm. if we are not so, in receptive state, yeah. but in active state. So, so, so it plays, I just wanted to finish the, the train of thought that uh, we're always acting in multidimensional polarity ways. So first of all, those polarities are acting within ourselves when it comes to our individuality. Then we're in polarity exchange with the universe and we're either... Mm, all feminine or all masculine in that and then we have polarity exchange with the uh, people and there too we are not fixed we're adapting and, f and very fluid in our uh, interaction with the other people so that's why I know it's very confusing uh, but we will get to understand that our polarities we need to know what's the optimum state but then when we interact with anything outside of ourselves they are very fluid mm -hmm. we can be any of that yeah i would say we can always think about it that it is like a balance inside of us you know like uh like the measuring balance uh like like libra kind of thing the measuring balance of male and female and it's always movable so we can kind of even think about it as shoulders if my right shoulder goes down i'm more into the masculine if my left shoulder goes down i'm more into the feminine and it is ever moving this is like i'm either more in a receptive state or more in the active creative state and literally every handshake between two people every interaction between two people is a little agreement who is going to be in this acting more uh, uh, in an active role so 
Am I going to do the reading and somebody is going to pay for it? If I'm doing the reading, I'm in a masculine role, somebody receiving the reading who is going to pay for it assumes the feminine role, whether this is man or a woman. The same goes for everything else. If we are entering the project, if I'm going to be the one who provides land and somebody else will provide uh, the construction crew and finances, then I'm being in a feminine role and they are being in a masculine role. So it is literally every agreement. I can be in a masculine role with one partner today about business number one, and I can be like in a feminine role later in the same day with another person in another business project or, or, or the discussion. So the thing to know is that we are always moving. We are always moving and adapting and it happens naturally without us even kind of paying much, much attention. But it is important to actually pay that attention so that we see what are these mm -hmm. concrete examples of when we act in a masculine and when in feminine. Yeah, it, ta it takes um, awareness to, to first observe how we act. For example, uh, I can give a very recent example mm. with Zane gave me massage. And uh, when it comes to giving me massage, it's, uh, we, we have this uh, polarity play. If she is not, so I'm receiving massage, so I should be in receptive uh, state and be the feminine polarity so that her action of giving uh, massage would have full expression. But automatically, if she is not uh, first thing asserting that masculine polarity within the, the giving us massage, then I will start kind of correcting Just, uh, correcting her how she should do better and uh, i would be the masculine force and she has to comply and do how how i like if she takes over and asserts well this is how i do and and you just shut up and receive <laughs> then that's exactly what i will do and i will say absolutely nothing and just bliss out so this is where we need to know what's our tendency if our tendency is more of the, the, mm -hmm. the weaker feminine, then when we perform or we have to perform a more like giving a masculine task, we need to remind ourselves to be that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, other person's masculine will take over. Yeah, let me actually build up on that same example. It's an excellent example about the massage. So the ideal way of acting, when we say aligned ma uh, masculine and feminine, it doesn't mean, okay, it's static. It means I go from the idea, masculine, into the heart and double check and then go back to the idea, back to expression, down to the heart again. And it goes on and off and I'm always correcting my path through checking with my heart all the time, whether I'm still on the right track. So if it's in a massage thing, it could be done either like I know I've learned it like this and I am applying the massage no matter what. This would be a masculine approach which never checks with the heart. It intellectually learned how to do things and cannot adapt to a person who is there. So it's always doing it the same way. For some people it works, for many it will not work, but they don't know how to check with another person, which would be a feminine thing to do. So when we start the massage, we start with what we have learned, but then with heart, we connect to another person and check how are they experiencing this massage? What this particular person need? And in real time, I adjust to actually uh, suiting this body to what it needs. So this is that constant going from masculine. This is how I know to let me check in this particular moment how it is feminine. And then let me continue massaging. This is again masculine. And let me again check with how they're reacting, what I'm giving them. So this is this natural flow, like a pedaling a bicycle, left pedal, right pedal, left pedal, right, right pedal, like mind, heart, mind, heart. And this is what we call alignment of polarities is that actually it flows through both of them. So good massage therapist, same like a good musician, they will play in a jazz band and actually tune into what others are feeling and they will co-create based on what is this collective feeling of a band. The masculine person will just play what they've learned and be out of the rhythm and like insist on kind of showing off and doing it out of some sort of 
previous discipline that they have built into learning this thing. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. So, so you see why the subject is so complex because within even that little example of massage, you have a double <laughs> kind of polarity check to do first. What's your inner alignment uh, to perform the task and what's your outer alignment within the situation with the person? So when you have these balanced polarities within yourself before starting the massage, and then you need to understand, okay, so the massage, I am taking the, the masculine polarity in this particular exchange. Yeah. So it, it works always in uh, inner and outer uh, adjustments. Well, if we understand how and what is the, the, the current state of our polarities, we can adjust our ways in incredible ways. But for that, we need to know what are the interferences happening because we can adjust ourselves with exercises and we'll give you some practical exercises how to bring yourself in a balance like for five minutes or one hour. But uh, fundamentally, uh, we all have some handicap uh, in one or the other polarity coming, of course, from the parents, as we uh, as we have learned, and society, etc., etc. Um, preconceptions and collective wounds. So how do we know where we are at at any given moment? So you can listen to your inner dialogue and it will be pretty revealing uh, about the state that you embody. You can just imagine for the sake of convenience a little you uh, in, a, in a, like a little man and uh, a little you as a, as a little woman and just listen how they are talking. You think it's just a train of thoughts, but actually there is a dialogue going on between what? We say mind and heart. Well, it's more uh, your inner masculine and feminine going uh, for a dialogue. So, for example, when the inner masculine in its, is, its, is in its low state of, um, of woundedness and the inner feminine is in its low state of woundedness, nothing much can happen. For example, you have unexpected guests uh, coming to you and, well, you don't, you don't know what to, how to receive them, for example. It's very simple. What is the, the train of thoughts that is going on? For example, your uh, inner masculine freaks out, I don't know what to do. And the inner feminine says, oh la la, they will think bad about me because I cannot receive. So inner feminine starts complaining, whining and making drama out of nothing. While inner masculine freezes and is incapable of action because it's... Uh, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't have that decisiveness. What we see on the outside, we are in panic, in state of panic. But what panicked inside are the little man and woman inside of you who couldn't together figure out how to properly receive the, the guest. So they act out of panic or a wound or obligation or fear and the result is never perfect. On the other hand, if that masculine and feminine were uh, completely chill and in the high mode, the feminine would tune in, oh, this person really likes uh, cookies or they are like a little bit specific, so let me see how can I set the ambiance. The inner feminine would light up the candle and make, you know, ambiance. And the inner masculine says, okay, we will do this. Uh, I need to get some more ingredients, but we will kind of receive them with dignity and, and inspiration. And the outcome is always very positive because there is this practical action together with tuning in into the mood of the situation. And like this, it goes for every single thing, millions of times uh, per day. We have decisions to make and who makes decisions is either uh, healthy masculine and feminine within or the wounded masculine and feminine within and what is the outcome depends only on 
this who is acting with whom. What we want in that perfect alignment is that we completely heal inner masculine, we heal inner feminine, and they can co-create uh, effectively together and create miracles. While we have either or both of them in the lower mode, then we, then we will always have problems. And this is where the problems will start surfacing and we will need to heal them. And to understand actually some examples, concrete examples, we can illustrate what are some characteristics of healthy inner masculine expression and what are some uh, characteristics of unhealthy masculine expression and both like that for the female. What are the healthy female, inner, inner female polarity expressions and what are unhealthy inner polarities or wounded inner polarity expressions? Mm -hmm. So do you want to go through some of those so that we really kind of make it very concrete? Yeah, try to, to put it in the right uh, drawers in, in your head. So we have these uh, masculine and feminine uh, and their wounded and healthy parts. Yeah, so it's basically going either in straight lines or in diagonals between one wounded part and other healthy or both unhealthy. Here, or I'll both, show you a little both healthy. graph. So if they are healthy, there will be both big circles like this and uh, they will actually beautifully interact together and be intersected here. So this is mature or, or uh, aligned feminine with aligned masculine. If they are wounded, they will shrink. They will not even overlap. So they will actually uh, trigger each other. Uh, Re repel each other and they will be kind of forcing things upon one 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 and the other so in order to be in this expanded mode when there is this uh, beautiful interaction and co-creation we have to bring our inner masculine and feminine qualities to this higher level and we will tell you what some of them are but this is just the graphic representation of what happens inside of you at every moment. If your uh, inner masculine and feminine has grown healthy, they will overlap like this and there will be this beautiful, magical point when they actually co-create together. Otherwise, they will always keep needing and repelling and forcing and so forth. And we will go now into detail and tell you what some of those expressions are. So the the higher masculine, as we said, you know, think of a divine man that you would like to have in, in your life and you will see those qualities that uh, that you would be excited to see in, in a man. Courageous, decisive, uh, disciplined, confident, objective, in touch in, in, with his emotions clear communication as sylvia said that's a that's a very masculine kind of quality sense of justice and uh, providing in um, in big areas of uh, of life yeah uh, at the same time the lower expression of that same masculine would be over assertive ego driven um you know brutal uh, walking over everybody's heads, uh, mm -hmm. goal-oriented, uh, we'll do it no matter what. Yeah, like imposing. doing out of obligation and not out of the right moment. Mm -hmm. Shaming other and then... Uh, uh, well, that's the man you don't want to be with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all those... Dogmatic. Uh, all those qualities of, uh, of uh, wounded masculine, those are the, the men that you would absolutely want to avoid in your real life. Yeah, And the, the positive qualities are those that you're instinctively looking for and, and uh, that seem attractive. For the feminine, the, uh, the healthy feminine is receptive, graceful, loving and kind, light and fun, Intuitive. inclusive and caring, heart-based communication, you know, the little fairy. <laughs> this is what every man would like to be with. Don't call it little fairy. It's really like a beautiful, strong, <laughs> creative field and also a fairy. And also a fairy. Yeah. So yeah. like unconditional love, tender 
and really open for sexual intimacy, you know, <clears throat> and sexual healing. That's actually mm -hmm. super important. Through that, open... Uh, Giving an inclusive... Yes, exactly. Like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, old wife that nobody wants to be with is the... the uh, so this is... Yeah, we can actually call it the lover because these are the qualities that, uh, that are Lover very, and the grumpy <laughs> and the old, old wife. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we are judgmental if you call it that. But okay, no, no, for but the illustration, it's good. You know what we mean. So <clears throat> yes. the old wife is usually this passive, lethargic, bitter, gossipy, dwelling in the past, uh, judgmental, needy and moody. Yeah, so that's what men would avoid and would not want to have around. And or nobody, by, by the way, would like to be around someone who is bitter, gossipy, indecisive. But don't passive. forget that you, as a man, will also have this mm -hmm. as that is inside gossipy you. or, you know, like sex, not for healing, but like sexuality for certain goals. So this is, all, well, there are uh, women and men who are in lower uh, feminine that can express this. So don't forget that this is really your, both of these are inside of you. We're not talking about outside. So yeah, this. yet, yet, uh, let's make it clear. We're not talking about, but we are <laughs> because seeing what you want in outside is actually what you need to be. Yeah. Well, you have heard millions of times, uh, if you want to attract your perfect uh, soulmate, well, be that what you ask it to be exactly. first. Yeah. So what does it mean if you are admiring those masculine qualities for you women that are courageous, decisive, uh, confident, objective? Well, your inner masculine has to be exactly that instead of being ego driven, career oriented, uh, uh, ruthless, etc. Yeah. So how do you know what do you have at the moment? Well, you can look at a very simple, for example, let's take, um, well, let's take, I'll, I'll take my, my own case. So for example, I have <laughs> the part that I don't like dealing with the bills. Yeah. The bills, accounting, you know, putting those numbers and, and things like that. And the part that I like tuning in, uh, you know, kind of helping people, making the house beautiful. So those things that I don't like doing, if I had my feminine and masculine in the right balance, I would say, okay, today it feels like a good moment to, to do the bills. That's the woman, inner feminine saying, and the inner masculine would say, okay, pull them out, let's just do it. Be precise, constructive, and let's get done with it fast. And it would take exactly, you know, I don't know, half a day to, to, to do the annual uh, accounting papers. With uh, the low uh, feminine and masculine, the same situation that could have taken like just half a day in my world looks like the feminine is, ah, oh, I don't feel like maybe tomorrow. Uh, let's not uh, oh it's complicated uh i'm not sure and the weak inner masculine is too weak to assert or drive and he says okay uh well as you want like i comply mm. i can't i can't drive you to the paper bag so well uh, that's what it, you know we'll do it so we're time. not gonna do it like mm -hmm. okay let it be your way and then that same lower feminine says I knew you're, you know, beating oneself up, yeah? I knew you were a loser. <laughs> I knew you could have done it and you didn't. And uh, why don't you do it? So we all have had these dialogues of kind of uh, beating ourselves up for not doing things. Who are we beating up? We're beating up our bitter feminine is beating up our weak masculine. And that's a drama. So as a result, nothing gets done. Uh, there's more reproaches, more drama more kind of uh, delusional thinking about it and still not doing it and finding excuses so it mm -hmm. escalates into like a murky uh, mm -hmm. thing 
So yeah. those exist at the same time. So what we can do? Let's, uh, or, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, and then I will add something. I just want to take this one example to to illustrate how the same situation can be dealt with two healthy inner polarities, two unhealthy. And for example, one healthy. And yeah, that's what I would which like. Which is exactly. uh, which is my kind of healthy inner feminine saying. Um, Oh, this is the right moment to let's you know to let, do let's let's do the bills yeah so it's kind of encouraging but the if the masculine is not assertive enough it doesn't have a power oh i don't know how to do it it's not I the don't feminine know, you see mm -hmm. the feminine says well you know i create the space you can do it now and it, it hands it over to inner masculine to do it but the weak uh, masculine doesn't know how to I don't know where to start it's complicated it's giving excuses yeah it's uh, not taking responsibility uh, I will ask someone else I will give it for someone else to do not taking responsibility and not acting upon so in this situation the feminine might have created the space but our inner masculine failed to to act, act upon on it, it. Mm -hmm. and this is what what Sometimes, you know, we, we observed quite a lot in Bali where women were very much in tune with everything except practical kind of concrete well, steps. Well, and women and men. So in Bali, we have this preponderance of female polarity, like negative polarity field, which means we have amazing, uh, amazing tribe here. We enjoy kind of creating field for things. We are really in alignment tuning and love in. and tuning and doing some ceremonies and stuff like that. But when it comes to actually concretely now using this field to create, for example, the functioning business out of it or creating, uh, you know, like a product or building a, a retreat center or something that is concrete, that would be like male action that it stops there. Or even following up, uh, let's say the feminine gladly receives the no knowledge and techniques, but, but not if using there's no <laughs> masculine to apply them, <laughs> it goes exactly nowhere. So, <clears throat> and uh, so this is an example of functioning really beautifully tuned uh, inner feminine with weak inner masculine. We have an opposite example in New York, <laughs> where you have very and everywhere else in the world pretty much we see much more of that because that's much more popular way to act it's to have supercharged inner masculine that has made the plans it has made action plans goes business with plans the schedules. goes with the schedule follows the schedules and does things out of the mind without any regard whether it is the right thing to make it is a, whether it's a right environment what happens to the planet what happens to the society this is this would be all the inner feminine that would actually take care of that part so it pretty much forces thing upon their environment and their their uh, tribe so that's from, when well, from, inner from, masculine from that state my example with the bills would look mm -hmm. like uh, if i had the weak feminine and uh, and uh, over assertive uh, masculine i would schedule the time for the bills and i would not check in whether i feel like doing or not it has to be done and must be on the plan here's the time we're just gonna do it and it will be the uh, inappropriate amount of work forcing and going against you know every other sense and possibly even like paying in different accounts you know making mistakes and uh actually ruining some other business because you know it, it's just rush uh doing for the sake of doing mm -hmm. and many mistakes can happen because it has not well we know mistakes mistakes are completely depleted planet what else do we need to look at it's like depleting resources on the planet without you know any, any way to to make it sustainable so that's what happens when the, when there is preponderance of masculine polarity, the plus. So to make things even more complicated. So now you, you see these four uh, possible types of uh, reactions to deal with a situation. But that's not it. For every situation, you might have a different combination. 
because for for there there would be some things to do something that you really love that your inner feminine and masculine suddenly click in complete agreement and perfectly as lovers do the thing in in very harmonious ways and there are other areas where you're wounded and your feminine and masculine just do not work well together it's when we say that inner judgment inner blame and i'm thinking of you Anne, that you you are very aware of those uh, inner inner dialogues uh well who is blaming what is that inner critic that inner critic is a, that old bitter wife yeah it's your inner feminine that is criticizing the masculine for any action that it wants to take thus the inner masculine loses courage to even start because it will again be criticized for doing or trying or or wanting something like that so by observing that inner dialogue who is and and really understanding who is criticizing do you sound like an old wife inside of yourself or do you sound like a over assertive businessman inside we can give really those images of um, you know the the beautiful young lover as uh, the aligned feminine that has a sweet talk and uh, and graceful action the 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 old wife uh, for the non-aligned feminine with a divine man inside and the grumpy uh, grandpa yeah for the for the lower masculine or over assertive businessman so when you you have seen these situations all over your external kind of reality so when you catch those kind of thoughts inside you can understand who is talking yeah is it the bitter wife that uh, said uh, that you are no good in, in 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 creating anything you'll fail anyways yeah and that is not even someone else telling you that is you telling yourself and then of course by the law of uh, of resonance outer world starts telling you the same thing and even the events start happening to confirm the same thing but who said it in the first place was your own uh inner lower feminine inner lower feminine so where did it get it from it got it from the parents society collective wounds etc etc so you see it's extremely extremely complex but simple at the same time because the bad news is that you have to understand the whole structure of what comes yeah. from where simple at the same time because they're just two yeah and they can be higher or lower expression that's it mm -hmm. imagine just two parts of yourself inner masculine and feminine higher expression or lower and any combination of them so like in that picture that i just shared so gitika is asking so if you're dealing with a person who is combative and aggressive and they have their own wounds that create their behavior how is the best way to respond and also how does one not to react but respond from the balance well so yeah. you see Beautiful. so this is uh this is bringing us to how does it work with other people so when someone is coming with a default setting of this aggressive uh, combative behavior what happens is that you are brought to balance it out by actually kind of being victim of it yeah you are being forcefully brought by other person's energy into complying yeah and if you are not willing to comply then your own kind of assertiveness and com 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 wait, combat mode will come up and create a clash because the other will not move in his position so yeah uh, so it's a great question how to act yeah go ahead yeah so something. so you need to understand the default setting when someone comes with a very strong uh energy like that will bring the opposite the balancing out with, within you and then you will try to balance yourself out because then you will be suddenly in minuses you will be thrown into the victim mode and then depending on what do you have inside your inner feminine will either freak out submit and say okay may it be your way 
and go into vic- uh, emotional kind of withdrawal, etc. So either your inner wounded feminine will take it all the way to confirm her wounds, or your unaligned masculine will fight back with all its might, being more assertive, more combative, more kind of uh, sharp with words. Or if you have the aligned masculine and feminine, you would assess the situation, masculine, your healthy masculine assesses the situation, okay, he's acting from the wounds, he's being completely off uh, for what what his part is, it's his thing, it's not mine, so the masculine would assess like what is really going on immediately, understanding his story or my story, he triggered or me triggered. So it will give a clear assessment of the situation and the healthy feminine would tune in. Okay, so is it an opportunity for healing or is it better to let go of it? And can I just drift away and leave it at that? Yeah. So it happens very fast because we have pre-wired responses within. Mm. But if you slow it down and you look, which of the four uh, positions in him came uh, to you and which of the four possible responses came out of you and who is clashing his wounded masculine with your wounded feminine or what and this is the moment that you can actually choose and if you understand oh this is what is going to on uh, going on but how would i like it to be how would I like to respond to the situation and catching any of the situations and being able to really assess what is going on in a slow mo mm-hmm. and being able to choose, but this is how I would like to react. Assess, tune in, take decision and make a constructive uh, reaction out of it. Yeah. So here we are coming to the topic of the third axis, forward and back. One of those being the level of detachment that we have. This is being almost like a future human. That's the forward one. And the one going into the back is the past human who was reactive and unaware and, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. seep into the everyday's world. So... If you're able to go into your future version of yourself in complete state of equanimity, so that's the third axis. Am I equanimous about it or am I not? Am I involved? Am I in the ring fighting or am I uh, in the audience looking at two people interacting? And what we want to be is in the audience, look at two people interacting and actually instruct my avatar, so to speak, to act in a way that my higher ver- vision of the world wants. So that's the third axis. Third axis is really the level of inner divinity that we have reached. Mm-hmm. Of course, in those moments, uh, we have no presence of mind to go within the heart, dwell and kind of give it extensive uh, uh, space yeah. of, of thought. But we can do it after. Mm-hmm. And, <coughs> and when we understand out of which position we react in which situation, we have a uh, capacity to upgrade that. But of course, we have to see the overall mood of our inner polarities at all times. And uh, well, we spoke the whole course was about uh, about how you how you get to that. But on a on a very simple level, if you if you just picture that perfect lover masculine or with a perfect lover feminine and you compare how was i that how was i in that situation was 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 i you know the the perfect lovers or was i the uh, grumpy grandpa with the, the old wife you know who who acted who did who spoke you know and and that's where you at least can measure what's the distance that you need to um, to cover to be the lover. And of course, it's an opportunity to look at the inner triggers that we have and to kind of to, to get out of them. 
to understand where they came from, to dissolve them through meditation, through looking at them, through really like alchemical fire, alchemizing them so that we are we are getting more and more into that higher state, higher state of two healthy polarities interacting together with detachment, with equanimity. We detach from the situation and we have a healthy, and now when we say healthy inner masculine and feminine, now we know what we're talking about because now we gave examples. So what we want is these two beautiful fluid aspects of ourselves to work together from the place of equanimity, then really everything is possible. What's possible is to solve the situation, to look in, inside, heal what we need to heal for ourselves, and then make the constructive decision. Will I keep engaging? Will I try to help this other person also heal? Or from this equanimous, calm space understanding, this is the end of our journey together and we will, you know, I will just engage in other scenario of my life. So, mm, yeah, yeah, so what, what we become when we have these things in check, we are well-rounded person. We are that person that everyone wants to be around. We, we just attract uh, the perfect synchronicity and flow because we are in tune with the constant flow of the universe and the nature and the field of all possibilities. And we are also constructively, uh, constructively taking those opportunities and acting upon them. So the, the importance here uh, to be that well-rounded person is to first assess where you are at within these for let's say little archetypes that I have established, uh, we have is established, and then seeing how can you redefine your relationship with yourself within yourself. When we say self love, it's not precise enough because whom are you loving? Who is loving whom in self? Like what self is loving what other self inside? When you think about it, it's kind of vague and absurd term. Because there has to be someone to love someone if you speak about self-love. So what self-love actually means is that you establish that love relationship with your inner masculine and inner feminine. They fall in love. They become lovers where they are beautifully co-creating together like a divine couple. That is real self-love. You give yourself the possibility to, yeah, to experience that union divine union within yeah otherwise the self-love would be the wounded inner feminine saying i need more of this i need the neediness the inner neediness would kind of bring the opportunities and call it self-love but it will be just one-sided or the wounded masculine that needs love would be you know, weak on, on actions and would indulge instead of being concrete and uh, and active. So that's where you have to be very careful uh, and understand the profound meaning of self-love, of self-respect. What is self-respect? Self-respect is when your inner uh, feminine and masculine respect each other. They respect their competences, their talents and and they are constructive together. That's what is self-respect. Self-worth. What is self-worth? Where the inner feminine and masculine value what they can do together. So you don't need external validation because you have it right within yourself where your inner feminine acknowledges uh, the performance of your inner masculine and kind of a little bit praises well well done you know uh, if, if you if you're really happy about how how you have performed in something unexpectedly well that praise that you're giving yourself is your inner feminine acknowledging and giving love to inner masculine who was like very efficient or very beautifully doing the thing yeah we forget to do this to really take an opportunity and celebrate things that we have done well in life reward ourselves with a little dinner with a little massage with a little special moment
to celebrate uh, the, the beautiful completion of something. Well, exactly like, uh, <laughs> like a partner would be happy for your accomplishment and kind of praise you and treat you. Well, that's what you need to do for yourself first. You need to treat yourself and acknowledge. If you don't do that, it's the old wife telling, uh, yeah, you could have done more, you know, being judgmental or, yeah, I'm not sure you, you, do the, you did everything you could. Or even just forgetting to do it, which would be an aligned masculine. Oh, I forgot to buy flowers. Oh, it was your birthday. I didn't, oh, I didn't do think it. it's important. So like forgetting to celebrate something well that you've done. It's literally this. You've been unaligned masculine. So this that self-worth, it's so simple, but we're constantly kind of taught to look outside for that validation. But actually what, what you're looking for in, in the outside is just the desperate inner uh, masculine that has shriveled and is being insecure and indecisive. So looking for that confirmation in outside through men or women doesn't matter for example me as a woman and now you have to follow uh, the path the path yeah me as a woman if i have a sh like very weak and shrunk shriveled uh, inner masculine that's insecure would look for attention in outside men to boost my inner little shriveled insecure masculine but if that doesn't change me then the outer masculine will lose its um, power you know it will have to conform and become as small and shriveled and inefficient as as myself that's what happens when couples together create even more or create even less than before that someone is not moving out of their stuck polarity so the other is kind of by resonance becoming the same so yeah actually this is a great opportunity to think about the couple as that four polarized magnet plus minus in one plus minus in the other and they're literally dancing to create equilibrium if they are not then if they are both kind of having preponderance of masculine they will get into the fight one will kind of assert one thing, the other will assert the other thing in the stubborn kind of way. It'll be quarreling. And this is like two men with swords. Other, otherwise, if they're like two unaligned females reacting, they will be sulking and not talking to each other. And he, the other one Lethargic. should know what I, what mm. I uh, uh, have a, a problem with. I shouldn't tell them. They should know what it is. They mm -hmm. should be aware that uh, they've done something wrong. Both being passive aggressive. And both, yeah, both kind of uh, sulking and being in their corner and, uh, you know, like with long face. So this would be two unaligned female polarities. Or they are beautifully adjusting to each other and co-creating from that place of once one of them creates inspiration and they both go and do something together, the other one... The other time, the other one creates the beautiful environment, maybe, uh, you know, bakes the nice cake or pie. And, uh, you know, they start talking about what they're going to do and then they kind of go and co-create together. So it's literally that this dance is always present. Dance and they are kind of literally conforming to each other. My masculine with her masculine, my feminine with her feminine and so forth. It's literally always in a dance like that mm -hmm. when we have very stuck positions in those polarities that's where there's this like fixed pattern playing out they always do like that or it's it's never mm -hmm. enough and that's when you see someone with very fixed wounded polarities well you know that it's not about to change yeah, it will either bring you down and that's what we call toxic relationship is when someone is stubbornly unwilling to change and stuck in their wounded. Uh, it's like the balance is stuck in in uh, in one position yeah. and it wouldn't move. Yeah. Normally it oscillates when you're by yourself. You should be like perfectly peace and, and quiet. When inspiration comes to do something, you will react either like this or like this. And that's the dance. 
But when somebody's balance is stuck in one position, in like only wounded masculine or only wounded feminine, then you know that no matter what you do, you can't move them, you can't unstuck their balance without like extreme effort uh, applied to it. And where, where it becomes toxic is when that stuck polarity is actually taking you out of whatever else you were before and you have to conform to it. Yeah. And that's where, you know, the, the red uh, lights start blinking because you are then being forcefully held in the opposite stuck polarity uh, system. So it's super, super intricate. But if you yeah, pay yeah. enough attention, you will see, you, you will you will get that angle under which to examine uh, everything that you do. Like I said, millions of decisions that you are taking daily. If you track down even for one day or two or three or like major events in your life, how you react to them, you will be able to see a clear pattern of either you, mm. your lovers uh, live through you or your bitter couple. Mm. Yeah, when we talk about that, this dance, it's actually really maybe a nice illustration. What is toxic polarity is one person stuck in their position on, on ma of male-female imbalance and not willing to get out of it because they're insisting to stay like this unbalanced. It's kind of like in a dance, somebody you're dancing with is constantly stepping on your foot and you try to conform to this. Okay, let's kind of change our step. And they're saying, no, this is how I dance. And it keeps stepping on your foot. And then the other person is forced to change the position of her foot or keep being injured so or, or choose a better dancing or partner. Ch choose a better <laughs> dancing partner this one is uh dancing always like this well the thing is if we have some something so kind of exuberant in our life such a colorful example that means we need a big big sign to as of what is going inside of us so you guys who are in state of love and bliss yeah you've you've managed with any of the million techniques which are all oriented in aligning the polarities after all you've managed to get yourself to the fluid and flexible polarity dance yeah and maybe it glitches sometimes but in a specific situation that still need to be looked at but when you have the general state of flow state of flow is when lovers are driving your body that's the state of flow the inner lovers driving and more areas that, that the lovers have kind of conquered within your life, the more overall sense, as Eve said, of like drive, being in love with life, synchronicities and miracles happening because the lovers are driving most of the time. Imagine that you're stuck in a car with the grumpy grandpa with the old wife. Imagine the ambiance in that car. And where do they go? They will never agree on anything and decisions will be wrong one after the other after the other. So you don't want to to realize that <laughs> your, your life is driven by the old grandpa trying to decide with his old wife uh, full of judgments where to go. Yeah. So the result will be exactly according to their like fighting preferences. But if there are areas that are driven like this, well, it needs you need to zoom in, zoom in to the detail of who wants to prove what and adjust it at that level. If you adjust anything at the level of the polarities, the whole big chunks of outer reality will untwist effortlessly because you are acting on it on the source. If there are some very twisted uh, areas of your life that are like dense uh, knots that you cannot unwind, that means there is some very stuck polarity preference somewhere deep within you. And if you dig down to that, untwist it there, the whole external knot will just fall, fall away because that's 
only expression of this uh, inner inner stuckness. So redefining uh, the inner relationship um, to change your outer reality, that's what we actually want because it's the most efficient way to uh, to actually live and interact with the outer world. Yeah, and, and manifest things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you remember like the state of being in love and state of pure flow is when the inner lovers are driving the thing and everything seems to be sparkles and, and, and joy until you hit some area where the balance is uh, suddenly shifting. And then, you know, basically, uh, there's one, one thing that came up, you're putting me down. Yeah. When, when you're saying someone, you're putting me down, next time you hear this coming out of yourself, you take it, wait, 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 wait. I am Who putting is me down. To whom? <laughs> Can I be putting myself down? No, I, why would I do that? And then listen deeper. Uh, is my inner feminine putting down my inner masculine so I can't act upon what I wanted? Yeah? So anytime you project a blame or judgment outside, take it back in and examine. And it's not obvious because, of course, first your reaction would be, why would I put myself down? No, I'm not putting myself down. But is your old woman inside putting down your healthy masculine by biting it and kind of, ah, ah, ah. You know, that is, we're reacting to the outside world, but based on what's happening inside. And that's the whole drama. That's the whole misunderstanding about relationships and what they are for, because we think it's about the other. Where actually they're just showing us what the state we of our inner the polarities. The state of our inner polarities, because uh, we leave them inside, but it's not clear because we don't hear that inner dialogue with enough precision. So when next time you are telling someone what they are or what they do to you, Turn it around and bring it back. You are not respecting me. Yeah. Okay. Turn it around. Could it be that I am not respecting myself? No, that's unlikely. Could it be that my inner masculine is not respecting my inner feminine? Hmm. That's more likely. Yeah. And in what situations? So like this, you bring it down back to yourself and examine how could this be true that your inner masculine is disrespecting your inner feminine and what it has to say. <clears throat> Next time, I can't trust you. Take it back. Can, can I, do I trust myself? I kind of do. Does my inner masculine who has to act on my inner feminine's intuition, does my inner masculine trust my inner feminine? and her intuition about the timing and inspiration, hmm, that's where you will find the, 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 the true answer. You are, you are too lazy. Am I too lazy? No, I'm doing all the time. So am I doing too much? Am I actually being over, overdoing, overperforming? because I feel otherwise insecure of my worth. So everything that you're telling to any dear person around you, turn it back in. Whenever see, finger is out, just remember that in front of you is a mirror. When you point your finger to the mirror, you're actually pointing to yourself. So just remember that in front of you is just a mirror. You are not supportive. Turn it back in. Am I not supportive to myself? Yes, I am. Of course, I love myself. Yeah. Is your inner feminine supporting your inner masculine? And in what situations? In some it is, in some it's not. And because we're living in this very kind of confused emotional state most of the time, it's difficult to discern where does it come from. But if you dissect it, 
even that trusting oneself how do you trust yourself is your uh, inner feminine trusting your masculine hundred percent of time every now and then a little bit or not at all and like this digging down you will you will really see the truth of uh, of what is going on and make adjustments where it's possible but after some time when you see that ridiculousness of the inner game you'll just give it up and have a good laugh and say okay you know what let's the, let's skip the analyzing part and go straight to the lovers yeah and uh, let's just be that what i want i would like to be with would you like to be in your own company you know if you were to marry yourself as a different person would you actually enjoy being around you or you're a little judgmental a little boring uh, sometimes funny but it depends uh, uh, you're down most of the time and uh, someone has to kickstart yourself would you like to be with yourself and that's your answer to where you are at yeah yeah Gitika, good question so Gitika is asking in the case that everyone externally is a mirror then how does one know if it's toxic and you need to step away or is it an opportunity for inner healing and has you should stay and work it out so well, yeah that's a great question yeah you know our preference <laughs> and you know this much you know it's always an opportunity, an opportunity. to work and you know experientially by whether you feel at peace with your inner answer so if you feel triggered in any way it means that you still have work to do <clears throat> if you're still triggered and calling it toxic and you're not like you're agitated about it it means i still have to look something inside because why am i agitated yeah who is reacting i'm <clears throat> reacting so i have something yeah. to work on but if you have looked it so many times and you have weeded everything out of yourself that would react to this situation and you're able to be in this front back axis in complete uh, equanimity and detachment and you see well this situation is still going on I have healed everything in myself and I'm seeing it with a degree of detachment and calmness that means okay well maybe then we have reached the end of what we could have learned from each other we have learned everything that we could and now is the time to move move move, move on in life mm -hmm. so only observing whether you're triggered or not and then if the you, next relationship <clears throat> will see if you have is just escaped or done the work really if you have escaped next next relationship will bring you the same lesson with like the volume up so it wasn't enough before you haven't really managed to see it then you need a louder message <clears throat> yeah well basically you know we, we have this whole course about it uh, but um, you know you can always ask your question how could the opposite be true like he is uh, how did you say uh, uh, aggressive or over assertive in uh, combative and and aggressive so could I be that I am am I combative and aggressive no first thing we will always say no I'm not that but when you see is my inner masculine or feminine combative and aggressive towards myself am I being that to myself in some ways yeah and where does it come from of course we have the whole theory of where it might come from and that's another story but establishing this uh, inner dialogue uh, about who is putting whom down within your own self who is encouraging who is afraid who is incapable of action who is frozen uh, who is in full groove that is where most of your answers lie and uh, yeah. th the, the true alignment by the way is not possible by doing any kind of exercise or or mudra mm. that can only give a temporary alignment so you get out of mm. the situation of disbalance but the true alignment is when you accept the divinity uh, in everything and everyone and you only you know strive to be the lover for yourself it's 
Yeah, it's sometimes really difficult to be super uh, orally, well, completely honest with ourselves because sometimes we honestly don't see these misalignments inside and sometimes we see them, but we are so ashamed to actually admit to ourselves that this is true, that we will gladly call, you know, like the other one is gaslighting, they are like toxic, they are this, that, they are that, because it hurts so much to own, to own and see the state. real inner state that is deeply rooted from, you know, who knows how many incarnations. <coughs> mm -hmm. So... And that's where the inner feminine actually uh, comes uh, handy because it accepts, it accepts the way we are with all the glitches and uh, and and wounds and uh, hiccups. Well, inner feminine it, it just exactly. accepts and says, "Okay," like it would accept a child that has come home dirty again. You know, uh, it would accept with with love and and kind of okay. Well. <laughs> This is who you are, this is how you are, and uh, let's see what we can do from here. So that loving acceptance towards oneself in any kind, even if you are doing the same mistake over and over again, but catching yourself, accepting yourself, forgiving and loving yourself for even trying, that is what your inner fe feminine will provide. The beating up, the pointing uh, fingers like self-blame, self-judgment is the old woman inside again i told you you'll never make it so give yourself that inner loving space of acceptance that you are maybe messed up maybe close to enlightenment whatever it is but it is what it is and we can always take it from here awareness is the key uh fixing the inner masculine at least to the point where we can be a little bit consistent in uh, applying uh, the practices and, and, and knowledge, that is also the key. And actually really observing, observing it and observing it even more if it's not enough. Sitting in that situation of unpleasantness and looking and observing because this is the law of nature, whatever we observe, we start seeing more and more and more details and it starts decomposing itself in its elements. So but just by just sitting and looking at it long enough and not escaping it, you are bound to find the real solution of what it is. It will come the clarity will arrive, but we need to keep looking. It's like yeah, we need to meditation look, uh, practice really. Deep, like for long in enough with uh, peaceful and calm observe ob observing objective observer yes objective observer and it will just emerge it will appear and it will come as like a shocking clarity yeah so the exercises that that are really helpful is uh defining so we didn't actually put together that list uh of uh, higher masculine, lower, fem higher masculine, feminine, lower masculine, feminine. It will be part of the next elaborate uh, course. So we're still working on, on putting it in a very kind of clear ways together. But you can uh, look it up. You can think and you can put those key characteristics uh, of all four positions together with maybe, you know, give it this personification of... Uh, of the bitter old wife, uh, grumpy grandpa, lovers. We are, all, of course, very politically correct <laughs> here. But uh, anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and ask yourself, so how would you like your divine man to be? Yeah, like the external one. Then project it inside. Okay, would, would you like to feel like that within yourself? And then how would you like, what kind of divine feminine outside you would admire? What would the ideal woman look like to you? And then bring it back inside. Are you that already? And then matching what it is, how would you like it to be on outside? And then bringing in. And where are you at at the moment? Are you that? 90%, 70, 20, nothing, 100. Like just establishing this uh, starting point 
are you being your lover yet or not quite or where are the little bites coming out every now and then and then start inhabiting this inner kind of uh, inner understanding about the dialogue yeah and following as soon as you have a dialogue in your head just following okay what who said that who said I can't do it was it my old wife who suggested that I can't do it or uh, who said I have planned it I have schedules uh, I need to be on time was it my wounded man that is uh, sticking to schedules and ignoring the natural timing and then making a deal as you would make a deal in a couple trade it align it however you want but obtain like a middle ground and the middle ground usually is funny is like when i have to do those famous uh, bills and papers that i don't like to do like my inner feminine is luring my inner masculine i'll make you a tea so start somewhere do just one yeah and uh, I'll make you more tea and uh, you'll do the other one. You'll see tomorrow you'll feel so much better. Tomorrow we'll do something you like doing. So you can bribe your inner masculine by, by, you know, promising it. We will make a nice meal. Just work till four on, on, on these practical things. And tomorrow you can go hiking. Yeah. And it looks a little bit schizophrenic on the outside because I come to the computer. I open the tab, I go and make myself a tea. I come back and I start, you know, typing something. I go and make a little chocolate, yeah? I come back and then finally it starts kind of... uh, And then I'm into it. And then I'm encouraging myself. Yeah, 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 like you're in, you're almost done. Let's, 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 yes, yeah, you're doing good, (laughs) great. Three more left, (laughs) yeah? So it's schizophrenic, but because we are two people inside and when it's bipolar, when it's bipolar attention, bipolar means that there's extreme disbalance between like two sides of ourselves. But this like slight bipolar that I'm coming and going and uh, encouraging myself and kind of luring myself, bribing myself into, into the thing. That's the dance. It is this inner dialogue that actually keeps us going. And then at some point, you know, when, when the things are done, ah, we both inside celebrate together. Alleluia. We can do something else. And then my inner feminine asks my inner masculine, what would you like to do now? Yeah. And inner masculine says, well, let's make something. And inner feminine, yes, what would you like to make? And, uh, well, let's make, a, I don't know, change the setting of the wall. And then both get excited. And the inner feminine gives the ideas. The inner masculine has no problem in getting the, the drill and the nails done. And we become, ve- we become very creative and productive at the same time. We had the idea, we had the skill, and we did something together. So like this, it works. And um, when you're aware of that, you can literally direct the life in the most optimal. And uh, not with ups and, without ups and downs, but in a harmonious way with understanding. When you are understanding, you are not subject to those bipolar dips of black and white. Yeah. You are somewhere in the middle, understanding where you're at at every every given moment. Key to understanding is that this actual movement between the two, because that's something if we kind of, if we understand that this is the normal state of affairs, that we go from one to the other, from one to the other and keep the dance going, like pedaling the bike. This is what we call the balanced polarities. It's not static, it's dynamic. They have created in a couple, in a pair, in order to make something together and create together. Otherwise, we would be super peaceful in meditation and complete bliss without ever doing anything like, uh, uh, you know, like the divinities. But we are actually here to create something. Yeah, well, the monks uh, over the span of like 30, 40 years are trying to get to the same result, but by pure 
kind of meditative and observation practice and uh, mantras and, and, and chanting. So they go for like pure overpowering whatever there was before by mapping that perfection, by calling in that perfection and mapping on every aspect of their being. That's a way, but it takes complete kind of detachment from physical reality. We, by being in a physical reality, use the physical reality, use the reflection that it gives to work on this through consciousness. That's the difference. So voila, we could go on and on. No, but I think but, this uh, is... It's, uh, uh, this no, is, uh, in a grounded. nutshell, mm -hmm. uh, the, the point we wanted to get across. And um, even though it's complicated, if you rethink about it, and more you think, more it will make sense. And more you actually dwell in, in these polarity questions, the more you will understand that everything is it. Yeah, in the course that we are making, this is going to be one of the very important topics. And there we will actually develop charts, exercises and things that where uh, if you need to and want to go deeper, you, you will have an opportunity. So practice with the exercise of defining how you would like your divine uh, masculine and feminine to be where you are at and what needs to be done to bring them together. Uh, you can practice the alternate nostril breathing, which is absolutely phenomenal for polarity balance temporary effect but when you are in one or the other swing this brings it really to the zero point uh, balancing the hemispheres of the brain anything left and right anything plus and minus gets balanced through the alternate nostril breathing you can choose all versions of it work choose the one that you are the most kind of uh, comfortable with um, we we follow the Sadhguru's one, but then there's Pranayama one and uh, other versions. Choose whichever actually get, gives you the best uh, result. As well as yoga exercises that are, for example, the baby pose that you kind of roll up together, like in, in one little ball, and then you expand into the bow, like completely arching uh, on the other side. It's like going within and expanding out so any opposites of that kind will will balance you can do it with your physical body or even if you do like symmetric exercises with your hands and feet but like regular and sy symmetric it will bring those pluses and minuses in uh, in more of a coherence well yeah the whole hatha yoga is about this hatha male female so any of the yoga practices will actually energetically balance this. So once that we have deep, this deeper understanding, then we can actually also apply it practically. And then yoga practices will support this by energetic balance. So yeah, there you go. Uh, now that if, we have confused you. <laughs> is it confusing? I, I, I feel that it's pretty... How do you feel about it? We have a few more minutes. Do you have some questions about it? How does it feel right now? We have confused you. <laughs> I can see. Yeah. Well, anyways, so this this is what uh, the uh, the Mercury uh, together with Venus uh, had to say. <laughs> uh, practical, constructive for you to take on and apply and uh, enjoy the beautiful softening of the energies and uh, and yeah a beautiful influx of uh, of love and light that's coming our way uh, uh, it perfectly articulates uh, <laughs> yes yes you were saying I, it perfectly articulates minor processes well yeah, yeah. i think Thank you, you hear sharing. those dialogues within yourself about mm. doing and not doing uh, and yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So great. And if you have any sharings or any further questions about this or like anything you would like to share, uh, let us know in the Telegram group and we will be happy to answer the questions or to reflect on uh, whatever you're going through. 
around this. Yes, so mm -hmm. that's it for today. Mm -hmm. Sending you big, big hugs. Grateful that you shared this moment with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so much love from this aligned polarity here. <laughs> 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 no. Ciao, have a beautiful weekend. Ciao. See you next next uh Saturday. Bye. Oh, sorry, I think it's not.